But I want to get back to a point, man. Get back to a back to 2018. Bring it out. I want to bring that out because uh, the, the cross, I can't let you walk away here, bro, and not know and understanding what you're doing with that thing. You understand that? Because like the officer was bringing out earlier, that's a form of oppression to our people. Our people pray to that thing. You familiar with the Catholics? Every time they pass the church, what they do? They do that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because they, they feel like that's a holy thing to, to be worshipped. Bring it out. All right, bring that out. Rebecca. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2 and verse 18. No. No. What profit is the graven image? Now, you said earlier, my, it was my father's chain. Right? But the Bible says, God says, what profit does that graven image give you? It gives you no profit at all. Read on. That the maker thereof hath graven it. The maker was who? Who forged that? The so-called white man, the Roman Catholic Church. They started that stuff. Read. The molten image and a teacher of lies. How is that cross a teacher of lies? Under Christianity with that same cross, it taught people what? You can live how you want to live. You can eat pork. You can have girlfriends. You can uh, sell drugs up and down the street. You can go to church or uh, to the club Saturday night and go to the, the club on Sunday morning. It night. teaches you that you can celebrate Easter, Christmas, Halloween, so on and so forth. But that's not in the Bible. Bring it up. That, that cross is a teacher of lies. That's hey, the same thing that came over in 1492. When you look at the images right here, if y'all could, look up at the sun. They came forcing our people. If you look at the sun right here, hanging us by the twelves, the number of the disciples, cutting legs off, burning us alive, right. killing, chopping hands off, right. killing babies. Right. Right. One second, sis. Killing, they did all of that stuff so you can worship that cross. Bring now it you up. put the same cross freely upon your neck. Now you're going to teach your son, you're going to teach your children to do the same thing. That's now you teach teaching them that white supremacy is okay. Bring it up. That thing flourishes. They making money off our people, especially in the, uh, the rap industry, right? They buying big old crosses, big old necklaces, what they do with them? Put diamonds, rubies on them. And then other people follow those same examples. That's now right. you see you see where that's going? Now you teach your people to do the same thing. Uh, what's your question, sis? What are the holidays And when you read in Leviticus 23, all the holidays in there. It's a lot, I can't go through a whole chapter right now. I'm just saying we do have uh, Yes, man, we have a whole bunch of holidays. Every first of the month, we got a new moon. You know, right. we got Passover coming in two weeks. Right. You know what I'm saying? You got Passover, That's dedication, what I mean, no. so on and so forth. I mean, you said I can find that word? Uh, Leviticus chapter 23. Well, I'll know where you can find that and learn better if you come to the school. No problem. You got you to gotta fight, right? In the back of that part, you got to add this good day. You got to learn. All right. Amen. Yes, man. I'll amen. You got to learn because uh, the Bible says how can a man learn unless somebody teach him. You understand that? If you already been following, I see how your reaction was when you came up. You've been following. You know what I'm saying? You understand that. But now, you're not getting a full nourishment. You're not actually, like a lot of people say, they're in the truth when they hear the Bible. You're not in the truth because the truth is God's law. Right. When you actually start keeping God's commandments, that's that's how you learn how to grow. That's how you build your spirit up. That's how you find out you've been doing things wrong your whole life. Okay, one more question. Yes, ma'am. Um, what do you do about separating from your husband? What do you mean? Be uh, more specific. Uh, I separated from my husband. And I'm pregnant. I'm I don't want to be on every family, but the way he's treating me, both of the way he's treating me, I'm not, uh, I'm not feeling like it's acceptable. And why I need to go back? So let me make sure I understand before I give you an answer. So you and your husband, y'all really start reading the Bible together, right? We started. Yeah. Y'all read the Bible. Obviously, y'all not in the truth yet. Right. You know what I'm saying? So is he putting his hands on you and so forth? Uh, verbally, but he didn't get there. So he put, he puts his hands on you. Yes or no? Yes. Sir. He puts his hands on, right? You say you're pregnant, you got other kids? Okay, let's get that first. Book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7 and verse 10. Yeah. Oh, and unto the married I command. So you're married, right? Yes. Yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. God, God said don't let the woman depart because the marriage is supposed to be forever. It's not just the, oh, uh, I feel like it, and then tomorrow I don't feel like it. God said marriage is forever. What? Read. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried. So God said, say for instance, we're not going to tell you to sit there in the house where a man put his hand on you. We're going to tell you, sis, get out that house. But God says, if you depart from that man, you have to do what? Let her remain unmarried. You cannot marry another man with another man. And that's what you're in the truth. Y'all not in the truth, so that's a little bit different situation. But if that was the case, y'all was in the truth. But God said, once you separate, you got to remain unmarried. Because now, that goes into fornication. All right, we don't. Or be reconciled to her husband. You understand that? You either stay separate and not be married again, or you go back to that man. So that's the only option. 
That's the only two options. Yes, ma'am. The Bible, when it comes to marriage, God says, when you get married, that's the wife's family. That's the one. It's against the law for another man to marry another man's wife. Yes, if she was married before. Okay, only instance will be when you read a marriage is if a man dies, for instance, right? Brothers in the truth, somebody's married. That woman will have to marry another brother that's in the uh, in the truth. Right. That makes sense? That's, that's right. Read, uh, go back. Okay. Read that, uh, at the time I guess. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7 and verse 12. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. So this is a case where, say you're coming in the truth, right? A, a, a brother has a wife. She doesn't believe the truth. Read it again. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with pleased him. Pleased to dwell meaning she's willing to keep the commandments just to make him happy. Right. She might not believe everything, but she say, I'm going to do what you say because I love you, so I'm going to come in the truth with you. Right. Like, and I'm going to get to that with your husband. Read. Let him not put her away. Uh -huh. 13. And, and the woman that which she, hath an husband that believeth not. Because as a believer, he don't believe if he's putting his hands on. I'm going to tell you straight forward. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, y'all are not in the truth. Y'all haven't been learning how to repent and cleanse your ways. Get rid of those evil or uh, those unclean spirits that we deal with. So say you do come in and the brother say, you know, to, he says to hell with you. I don't want to deal with that. Read. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not. And if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. That would be a situation if he says, all right, I don't believe that Bible. I don't believe that Israelite stuff. But because I love you, I'll do what you say. I'll come. I'll put my fringes on. I'll come to the Sabbath and so on and so forth. I'll do the things to make you happy. But I really don't believe it. That would be the same situation. All right? Uh, we don't. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. In that case, you have a husband who don't believe, but the sister does. He's doing the commandments because of her. So he's now cleansed because he's keeping the commandments. Bring it out. He's sanctified by the wife. Right. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Same thing with vice versa. If you have a sister who don't believe, you know what I'm saying? She don't want to hear the Bible, but she keeps the commandments. God says now she's sanctified by that by the husband, or vice versa by the wife. Read. Else were your children unclean. What does that mean? Else were your children unclean? You say you got children, right? You got one of them. So that's the first one. Okay, so well, when it says else were your children unclean. So I tell you myself for instance, I have, I have four kids, I got a daughter, older daughter, right? She lives with her mom who don't keep no commandments, don't care about her, right? If she comes to my house, eats the Sabbath with me, go back to her mama's house, and she celebrates Christmas, Easter, so on and so forth, my child is unclean because she's keeping both. You can't do both things. You understand that? So that's why God said, your husband will be sanctified if he's willing to do those things. If not, you will be, your children will be unclean because they'll be confused. That's what I go into. Confusion. But daddy, I thought Christ was black. Mama said Christ was white. But daddy said you can't celebrate Easter. Mama said we can do it. But daddy said this. And then that's confusion for that child. Alright? You know? But now are they holy? Now are you holy? Now you forget. I'm gonna jump around because you know how long you've been watching. Wow. Two years? Okay. Alright. Alright, give me action for the what we out here teaching, as y'all know, we teach our history. It's, the Bible's all about repentance, all right? Actually, it's on 119 and 16. Hold that and go to Acts 19. Yeah, Acts 19. Acts 19, all right? Y'all got to understand, God has a requirement. If y'all know y'all on this side, we are the greatest people off this earth. That's right. The king, the priest, the princess, the gods of the earth, that's us. Right. Look around, this is the proof. Look at the conditions of our people. Because a lot of times we have, we have questions like myself. Before I heard the truth, I was like, well, how come we live, I've been growing up in the ghetto in the hood, I forgot that. You know what I'm saying? How come we grow up like this? The white people, they got this. The Chinese got this. The Arab got this. We got, we live like this condition we in. Bring it up. We suffer from uh, Planned Parenthood on Miller Street, right? Is that in the so-called white man neighborhood or the Chinese neighborhood? No, it's not. G we got bottle stores. I'm actually going home. When you go out there, you see how we live. Bloods and crimps. We kill each other for the white man. Then they come and kill us right behind it. That's how come that happens to our people? We the only nation of people who will send up march protests, but then we'll turn around and kill each other. The same brother I'm marching protests who got killed, I'm going to go kill his brother the next day. Y'all see, see how it makes no sense? That's because we haven't learned God's laws. That's but we're going to go and get the medicine because our people are sick. Spiritually, mentally, we just destroyed as a people. 
Right. We got to understand how to come back and heal ourselves. Read that. The book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse 19. Read right. out. Repent ye therefore, uh -huh. and be converted. So God has commanded all three of y'all. He said repent and be converted. What does it mean to repent? To let go everything you're doing and do his one. Right? I like repent that. I like that. I like that. God is going into it. Go ahead. Yeah, when you repent, you turn it away. Right. Right. Alright, so God says we must be, we must repent. We must turn away from something. Repent is a process of return. It's an action. You turn it away from something. He said be converted. Alright, read that. The book of Sarah, chapter 21 and verse 1. Bring it out. My son. Hast thou sinned? Have you sinned before? Yes. Have you sinned? Have you sinned? Right, read on. Do so no more. Just say that one more time. Do so no more. Read. But ask pardon for thy former sin. That's how you repent. God said if you sin, you have to acknowledge your sins to him. And if you commit it ignorantly. You know what I'm saying? Because as of before, probably today, well, I know you've been watching for a couple years, but it's still things that we don't even know that we break in uh, God's commandments when we do. Right. Come back to Acts 2.19. That's what we got. That's the part of repentance. Right. Action, uh, acknowledging your sins and turning away from those things. Real. The book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse 19. Real. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. God said you have to repent. This means what? Turn away. Turn, away. Turn from your what? Your old way. Wicked way. Uh, one word start with an S. Sin. There you go. Turn away from your sins. Ask pardon for your former work. Sin. I got to make sure y'all paying attention. Alright, make sure, man. Alright, you said turn away from your sins. You got to acknowledge the sins. Turn away from those things. We don't, is that it? When the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Now let's get you on the Now, we showed you that God said you have to turn away from your sins. Now, we're going to point out some sins. Because God said a man may be known by his look. Alright? Right. right. So by the look, when we look at y'all brothers and sisters, but repentance is going to you acknowledging that sin you committed. Because some people say, forgive me for everything. Is that really acknowledging your sin? If you got this stolen, you say, forgive me for everything. Is that acknowledging that you begging for forgiveness for that sin you committed? No. You got to acknowledge it. Uh, exactly. And you got to pray. When you pray, you got to pray out your mouth. You got to repent out your mouth and tell him. He know what you did, but he got to know you know what you did. Give me that. It's all 51. Bring it out. The book of Psalm, chapter 51 and verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God. Oh, hold that. Give me uh, Romans 10 and uh, 14. We go go there, then we're going to go back. I'm going to go back and do it. 10 and uh, right here. 10 and uh, 9. The book of Romans, chapter 10 and verse 9. Bring it out. The book of Romans, chapter 10 and verse 8. So we gotta, when we confess, we got to confess out our mouth. It ain't no you sitting there and the church is telling you. You doing some type of meditation or the, uh, we do do that, the monks or uh, 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 yoga and all these different things. You put your hand together to let me do God. No, you got to say it out your mouth. Go ahead. But what says it? The word is not even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Uh -huh. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, uh -huh. and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, uh -huh. thou shalt be saved. He's gonna, he, he gonna come save you from whatever sin. He's gonna forgive you from that sin. Go ahead. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the mouth, you got to confess. You understand? That you was wrong. So go back. I'm, I get that scripture to let you know that because look what David said here. Go ahead. The book of Psalms, chapter 51 and verse 1. Yo. Have mercy upon me, O God, uh -huh. according to thy loving kindness, uh -huh. according unto the multitude of thy tender mercy. Uh -huh. Blot out my transgression. He asking God to forgive him for all the sins. His transgression, transgression is breaking of the Lord. Go ahead. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity uh -huh. and cleanse me from my sin. So something water can't wash over your sins. You and your spirit, in your mind, you got to confess with your mouth. That's what's going to clean you. That's what's going to clean you when you confess to God that you're wrong, you're guilty. I eat pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, I'm guilty. Other 
playing pins, Lord, I'm guilty. I was doing this, that, and the third. I'm guilty. I was a hormone. I'm guilty. That's how you gotta go to the wild father. But this next verse right here is gonna prove to you how you're supposed to do it. Go ahead. Verse 4. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned. Verse 3. For I acknowledge my transgressions. I acknowledge. I see where I broke the laws that God forgive me. I see where I treated my brother Lord. Murder is not just you taking a gun and blowing somebody's head off. Murder, if you hate your brother in your heart, you're a murderer. Yeah, hey, that's right. If you hate your brother, that's a murderer. So right. you gotta, if I'm mad at my brother for some simple, I gotta thank God for forgiveness. You know what I'm saying? That's me acknowledging I was wrong for being mad at my brother. The son, I could have just went to him and talked to him about forgave him and we could have moved on in the situation. You know, what? For I acknowledge my transgression. So you gotta see and know when you're breaking the laws. And my sin is ever before me. Because his sin he see. Lord, I was a homemonger. I, I was an adulterer. I was a, 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 a thief. I was a liar. I see this what I was doing. I acknowledge it, Lord. Against thee, thee only. Against God and God only. Have I sinned? Do we sin? We don't sin against nobody else, sister. We only sin against God. I ain't sinning against him if I go out there and steal something. Right. I ain't sinning against him if I lie to him and he don't know I'm lying. Right. I'm sinning against the Father because the Father knows. Right. Right. And done this evil in thy what sight. And done this evil. He done evil by doing that. Right. By breaking God's laws, he said, I've done evil. And forgive me for it, Heavenly Father. Please, I'm, I'm crying, I'm begging you. Right. Through his mouth, he's telling God this. Read. In thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest. Uh -huh. And be clear when thou judgest. How God speak through his Bible? For every law we break is a judgment for it. All right. That's why he said, when thou speak and when thou judge. And we're going to get judged by every law we break. That's if right. you know it or you don't know it, you're going to get judged for every law that we break in this life. Now, right. I want y'all to understand this. Give me Deuteronomy 2 and 2 and 5. We might take certain things or the laws as a light thing. God, God is very, very... Uh, serious when he says do this and don't do that. He gave us a straight commandment. He didn't say go to the left, he didn't say go to the right. Read this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. Here's what we That if a nation of people, you know how much hoarding we would stop with this law? We stop uh, baby mamas, women would probably stop getting raped. It would probably, it wouldn't stop, but it would reduce dramatically if we applied this today. Read. The woman shall not wear that. Uh, the what? The woman. Who we talk to first? The woman, right? You listen, sis? The woman shall not wear. Shall not wear. This is a law. Read. That which pertaineth unto a man. What right. pertains to a man, brother? Pants. Pants. How you know that? Because I wear pants. So your wife, when she wearing pants, she wearing something that pertains to what? A man. When you go to a bathroom, you see a skirt. A sister wearing a skirt, you see a man. You see you a man wearing history, a skirt. Huh? Me and the skirts. Yeah, exactly, me and the worst skirts. In uh, history, you have our foremothers, uh, where the picture at? Picking cotton and, uh, the, picking cotton and dresses. Right. We always dress like that. When you look at any royal, so-called royal family today in England, do you see them wearing pants? They wear dresses. Dress. Y'all understand that? Uh, right. Read that again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Actually, hold up. Actually, keep reading, keep reading. Keep reading. Uh -huh. Neither shall a man... Stop. Neither shall what? Shall a man uh -huh. put on a woman's garment. A woman's garment is what? A dress. It's a dress. You wearing high heels, you wearing makeup and lipstick. That's uh, wearing, uh, what's that stuff they put wigs on trying to look like a woman? God said, no, do not do that. Yeah, uh, the transgender, all that kind of stuff. God said, do not do that. Because I tell you right now, a bunch of men, right, with beards. We out here standing in dresses. We reading the Bible. Would you take any of us seriously? Let's be real. You will take nobody serious. So you gotta be able to look at the same thing with a woman. So the earrings are bad too. Huh? The earrings are bad too. No, the earrings are bad. God said, woman apparel, wearing a dress, all of that stuff, men are not supposed to wear dresses, women are not supposed to wear pants. The reason I said this earlier is because God said that his laws talk about there should be no daughter or no whores of the daughters of Israel. Right? Right. 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 So That's when right. you wearing, like, for instance, what you wearing? Tight pants. What can a man look at her and see? A shame. There you go, you see the foot, the front part, the thighs, you know what I'm saying? But then you got our people, this is how simple-minded our people are. What? Now I'm not talking about you specifically. Our sisters wear uh, booty shorts, right? The butt hanging out, the uh, the cleavage out, and they walking down the street with their sister, looking at everybody, I wish you would look at my girl. But cover her up in the first place. That's, That's right. You see, you That's a contradiction. Bring it up. People do these things, but then they'll kill a brother or sister for looking at his wife before a girl. But God said, That's for you. Because we already read the scripture earlier. I know marriage is honorable. 
Guys, that's that's for you. When you go home with your wife, her nakedness that's for you and your eyes only. That's so now you, gotta, you put a thought in another brother's mind. They ain't looking at that girl's butt. They ain't looking at their sister so and so forth. That you a married man, you looking at a sister. You know what I'm saying? That's that might right. be somebody else's wife. Now you lusting after another man's wife. That's now right. you now you have the lustful thoughts. Now you commit adultery. That's now you got babies popping up out of nowhere, baby mama drama. Now we got herpes, AIDS. Now we got Planned Parenthood. Bring it out. Over that's here right. off Bentley Street. That's right. Because that's adultery. That's, that's right. right. That those things grew up. You get know what I'm saying? Bring it out. You understand that? Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.